Now, this is what it did. Ah, see, it's recording. Yes. Welcome, everybody. This is the Internet Marketing Unleashed podcast and blab. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology. I'm uh, happy to have you join us. And I'm very, very excited about today's very special guest. He is a certified life coach. He's a professional motivational speaker. He's an entrepreneur, licensed psychology teacher. And this blows my mind because I am terrible at this sport. Head basketball coach for USA Basketball. His main areas of expertise are teaching, coaching, public speaking, personal development, personal transformation, the human mind, maximizing human potential, motivation, and goal setting. And in fact, it was the motivational aspect, the maximizing human potential aspect of his teachings that drew me first to our guest. He's a licensed psychology, history, and government teacher for grades 5 to 12. He's been teaching high school for the past three years. As an entrepreneur, he's running his own life coaching and motivational speaking business, Joe Paris Academy. Joe, welcome to the show, and I'm so excited to have you here with us. Thank you. Really appreciate it, Scott. And uh, yeah, that was quite a, a CV that you kind of just rattled off there. And uh, we'll get into talking a little bit more about that. I, and kind I want of what you to I'm help doing. me with my three three throws. Yes, three, yes. I think we yeah. uh, definitely could be able to, to help you out there and uh, talk about that as well. One of the reasons why I'm really excited to have you on the show and to kind of like meet you. I think this is the first time we've actually met sort of in person. We've had some sure. email going back and forth and stuff like that over the years. But um, the first course that I and I am sorry, you, you have so many. I don't remember which one it was, but the first one that uh, that I took that was yours. You're you were in Chicago. You're, I think you're still in Chicago and right. you're uh, you were by the beach. Yes. And you were you were videoing yourself by the beach. And there was two parts about it that really impressed me because I tried to do something similar and realized just how difficult it was, okay? Sure. And <laughs> because <laughs> and what it was, well first okay, so number 1, I want to get this out first. Most instructors and I'm going to throw this out at, at totally at you to me and, and I think all the other course platforms it's exactly the same most instructors are incredibly boring they do something like what we have right now right we've got these boring backgrounds hit you know we chat blah 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 and it is really pretty boring now that means that we have to be very very good all right yes. <laughs> and and one of my first Udemy courses ever was Alan Hill's YouTube something or other and of course all he ever had was a single slide up in those yep. days you could get away with it and he's blah, 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 which was even more boring, right? Yeah. So to have you like on a beach with the Chicago skyline in the background, to me, was exciting. Like, I mean, I thought like, wow, that's like, you're really thinking about this and you're putting on a little bit, you're putting some effort into it. Sure. And that's the first thing I really, really appreciated about you was that you did that. The second thing was uh, a gorgeous lady in a bikini walked by. I might be making this all up. Looked at you and went, woo, nice. And of course, threw you right off of whatever it was that you were saying. And you sure. were brave enough not to uh, edit it out so that it remained in there. And it was just like, yeah. And you even actually addressed the issue of, you know, here I am. I'm in public. People are walking by. They're looking at me with this this guy on the, sitting on the beach, standing on the beach. He's got this camera. He's talking away like, what the hell is he doing, right? right. And so I've done this at Machu Picchu, right? Okay. <laughs> And I did this before, I mean, it was long before I knew anything about Udemy, or actually that's not true. It was before I put my course up on Udemy, so before I knew you, because mm -hmm. I had the sort of the same thing. I thought, like, I'm in Machu Picchu, like, what a great backdrop, because I can talk about my topic, like the introduction to my topic, not stuff I need to show you on a screen, mm -hmm. um, anywhere, so, you know, with, with my eyes closed in my sleep, having a nightmare. So, <clears throat> so I went and I did that. And so here I felt like a kindred spirit, you know, somebody that was actually stepping out of their comfort zone and, and doing this. And so after you, after I saw you do this, I went out someplace that had more people. Like with Machu Picchu, you could kind of, like everybody was taking pictures. So nobody was paying any attention to me taking pictures. That was one thing, right? So sure. I blended in that way. And the second thing is, is you could find a nook and cranny somewhere where there was nobody or two people. Mm -hmm. and 
it was really frustrating a couple times because I would find this old ruined stone building on, in Machu Picchu. And, oh, this is really cool. And there'd be nobody there. And as soon as I got the camera up, <laughs> somebody walked in with his girlfriend and they were blah, 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 in Chinese or Korean or French or whatever. Yes. And it's like, ah, like, and you can't say get out. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so you have to wait and then you get your moment and then you would, I would do it. But, uh, you know, so, but that was, that wasn't the same as what you did. Right. So sure. I tried that. I was somewhere and, and I'm, it, there's people walking by and I'm trying to record. And I was amazed at how hard it was not to be distracted by the people walking by looking at me. Right which made me realize how hard it was like for newscasters that are talking and there's a fire going on behind them or, or all that stuff. Right. Like yeah. it takes, it's just something that takes practice and I had no practice at it. Absolutely. And then I, and then I realized like, Oh, this, this is more <laughs> difficult than it looks, sure. which, which of course just made what you did even, you know, more impressive in my mind. Right. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I mean, to talk about it a little bit, um, it's, it's crazy. I've just been inspired by watching other videos very similar. And I've seen videos of guys who do personal development stuff and they're traveling to even crazier places. And uh, it just inspired me because it's like, you know, as a viewer, you know, me personally watching these videos, I was very inspired. I was like, wow, that's really cool. They're in, you know, you know, Hong Kong or, you know, wherever they're at and uh, shooting videos. And um, this is just kind of inspiring. It's like, that's the life that I want to lead. Hmm. And um, I thought it'd be, you know, a really great way to engage the viewers in my courses. And uh, it seems to have worked at least for one viewer here. And uh, <laughs> that, um, you know, is encouraging and inspires me to want to do more. But um, it, it was extremely difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, learning that process, so frustrating. I remember um, trying to figure out how to get the audio to sync up with my camera to have good audio because I kept looking at lav mics on uh, Amazon and they all just plugged into your phone. And I was like, okay, mm -hmm. how do I get the audio then from my phone onto, um, does it have to overlap? Like, you know, who, who's going to know this answer for me? And I remember like asking people and they were just like, yeah, it just overlaps. And like, they weren't very detailed about it. They weren't mm -hmm. giving me the answer I needed. And finally I went to YouTube and this was after searching on YouTube for like a day. Yeah. Found the exact video I needed, and uh, the guy showed me step by step, and I was like, "Oh, thank God you created this video because <laughs> I was really freaking out." And uh, gave it a test, gave it a try, got the uh, tripod and the camera, and uh, just had the the faith really, and said, "You know, if other people can do this, why not me?" Sure. And um, I gave it a try, and yeah, um, there's a, you know lots of uh, videos that did not get published where you know there are sirens going off and there are people <laughs> that are you know being distracting and uh, you know it is you know you get some anxiety you're just like oh my gosh like be quiet I'm trying to do something and then you get people looking at you and like I remember I had like a little boy not kidding um, I was on a pier in Michigan and he like stopped to like watch what I was doing and like here I am talking to the camera trying to like you know. Uh, can give this lecture and those kids just like stopped and like isn't isn't going anywhere like anytime soon it's just like what's going on and uh, I continued with it and just kind of you know went with it but you can feel other people like staring at you and it is uh, you got to have a certain amount of confidence and self-esteem to do something like that and uh, you know just got to get out there and keep practicing it I think that um, you know, the first couple of times, obviously, were very frustrating. But from there, you kind of just learn, you kind of adapt, and you kind of just know what to expect. Um, and so, That's the learning process, isn't it? It like, is. I find I had the same problem with you in terms of the syncing up of the sounds. I use mm -hmm. Final Cut Pro, and I found it incredibly frustrating. And I now have a system which is no longer incredibly frustrating. Uh, but I, But I know that. <laughs> There's some way that you can do it that's easier than the way I've got. And I still haven't figured that out. But uh, I, I keep learning a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. I get better and better and better and I get more relaxed. And that's the learning process. And we need to sort of accept that because that's, you know, one of the things that I've come up against all the time is I don't know how to do something. There's nobody in the world that's going to be able to teach me how to do this because if I don't know it, nobody else is going to be able to, you know, help me figure this out. And sure. of course, that's totally wrong. Sure. And, and but it's taken me a long time to get over that attitude and then you find something and it's like oh 
how do I do this? And then you struggle with it. And then, you know, a week later, it's like, what's the big deal? I really remember that. I forget what it was I learned a month ago, but I remember thinking exactly that, you know, why did I think this was hard a month ago? Yeah. And of course, it's because my brain has changed, right? Exactly. <laughs> so I want to, um, one of the things that's really fascinating to me is that you're an actual teacher. Yes. I am an actual grocery store manager who left the grocery business 20 years ago, ended up realizing that computers were the big thing and had self-taught myself and my three-year-old son how to use our computer. It was like, you've got to do something with your son. And so I got a math, Neptune was the name, it was an underground math game. If you added one plus one and you put two in, a door opened and you swam through it. So he would sit on my lap and he'd be figuring out these math things and I'd be figuring out what the keyboard was, never learned typing. Sure. And when I left, the the um, telecom, the local telecom went computerized and someone says, well, Scott, you know, you're really good at teaching people how to, you know, stock shelves and stuff and, you know, computers and they need to know how to use computers. So why don't you go and help these guys out? And so I did. And I ended up being an adult learner, a teacher. So um, uh, and not taught at all. Like sure. my first day on the job, I was sitting in a class watching the teacher teach so that I had something to model at nine o'clock. And at 915, someone stuck their head in and said, Scott, come out and bring all of your stuff with you, which meant either I was fired for some reason or something else. And the something else was we made a mistake on the schedule. You have to go over to a suburb of Vancouver and teach 30 people how to send email. <laughs> that was, I had 15 minutes of training on, uh, on teaching, right? Sure. And so, of course, I did what I always do in these situations, which was fine, no problem. And I told them what I just told you and said, so we'll see what happens. And it was, it was a great time. So, yeah. uh, you know, but, but I have never taught, I have been a grade five student. I have been a grade 12 student. I've never been a high school teacher with that background. And so to me, it's really fascinating to talk to you and say, okay, uh, what are some of the differences? What are some of the things that you took from your training to be a high school or elementary, middle school teacher that you're bringing into Udemy? Because I don't think anybody ever sort of talks about these things. Sure. Yeah, I think it is very unique, my situation. Um, we'll kind of go back a little bit further, kind of give the audience here a little recap of who I am and um, everything else. But I went to a small liberal arts college in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, I was recruited to play basketball there. Um, and that's why um, I've been helping out with USA basketball and um, coaching some um, little little guys for uh, USA basketball. And um, so I had that experience and I got my teaching license through them and, um, you know, started teaching uh, history, psychology, and it's been a very unique experience. Um, definitely, I think what happened was I did that for a couple of years and this is actually my last year doing this. Um, and we're actually <laughs> ended like literally yesterday. So, um, oh. yeah, it's a. Uh, that's why I have the time right now to be, be doing this, which is nice. And um, from there, um, I saw about a year ago an ad for Udemy. And I just clicked on it and just saw that these courses were like, you know, a couple hundred dollars a piece. Yeah, and like me. Like, yeah. And then there was like <laughs> 5,000 people in there. I did Do the, the math. Yeah, I did the quick math. And I said, okay, um, this is interesting enough for me to explore this. And um, I came across one of Alan Hill's courses. Um, his was on how to how I make like $4,000 a week or something. That's what it was yeah. titled back then. Yeah. And um, I was like, all right, you're making four grand a week. I'm making, you know, about that in a month. So let's, uh, let's figure out this online teaching thing. Because heck, I already have, you know, the resume, I've been doing this, I've had some experience getting up in front of kids um, in the classroom in the high school setting, I've been trained to do this. Um, so, you know, this is interesting to me. So yeah. I took the course, I actually, uh, they had one of their flash deals at the time. And uh, it was, you know, $10. So I didn't have to pay the full couple hundred bucks is what it was being advertised for. Right. And I remember I had like two hours to like enroll in the course, it was like really coming to an end. And I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna spend $10 and educate myself. So I uh, enrolled in the course. And I remember 
I don't know if people do this for Udemy courses or online courses anymore, but like literally I got on my computer, I took complete notes on the course, like hardcore notes was like, you know, really listening, like rewatched the videos like multiple times. And I understood what he was saying and um, some marketing strategies and like how to get started. And, um, you know, I saw, I guess what was inspiring to me is, you know, what you mentioned as well is he just had like a, a screen and a microphone. Like you didn't even see a picture of him. Oh, this was like, not hard. Yeah, no, this, yeah, there was like nothing. I was like, wait a minute, th this dude's making four grand a month on this. Like I can be more engaging. I'm, you know, half this guy's age and uh, I definitely have some ideas and heck I, you know, I have some experience doing this. So mm -hmm. I gave it a shot um, and figured out that it was definitely a lot harder than uh, he made it to be on the marketing end and getting people to enroll and, you know, a few other, you know, issues that were going on and why he was getting the results that he was getting. But I saw enough results right away to push to that next level and saw, okay, well, somebody was, you know, I remember I, I, the first course that I created was on goal setting because this was something that I had experience with and had some awesome results with and some things that I actually teach in the classroom. And um, what was really cool is I created the course. Um, it was very basic. It was like PowerPoint. And like I tried to make it as fun as possible. Um, but again, I had a basic microphone and started with a like MacBook mini uh, or not even Mac, like a Mac mini computer. So like just the bare essentials to get by here. And um, I put it out there. I had a very catchy title. That was like the really big thing uh, that he kind of mentioned was like, you got to get people to like take action and like, you know, get their interest right away with your title. So I was like, all right, I'm going to, you know, make a title that's going to be very uh, interesting to people. And I remember I put the uh, a free coupon in the Udemy studio and you could do that. Yes. And like overnight, I had like 800 people enroll and I was like, wow, this is amazing. 800 people like took, you know, just wanted to enroll in my course. Like this is really cool. And, um, you know, it took me a couple of weeks to actually get my first sale. And like, you know, the first month, obviously, I think was like $40 or something like that. But from there, it really evolved into something now where, uh, you know, I have a hundred and close to 25,000 students and close to 60 courses now. And, um, yeah, it's really, really interesting to look back and go, holy cow, like this is this has gone way further than I guess maybe I had imagined it to. But at the same time, maybe I didn't because, uh, you know, here, here the results are and here, right. here, here's everything else. So, well, and um, that's when you started, that's what you were expecting, right? You were expecting to get these types of results. Exactly. Um maybe not this good because I don't even think Alan Hill had as many students as I have right now, but right. um you know, it's um, it's amazing. The you know, Udemy is an awesome platform. I really, really have learned a lot. I've worked with them, and I'm excited to see where the future has been going and uh, where it is going. Let's say, and uh, right. yeah, that's kind of my little experience. Um, but you know, taking you know, I guess going back to my experience in the classroom, you know, you have to have a certain amount of personal skills, and you have to be able to. Uh, communicate very well. Uh, students today, the technology um, is really what they seem to be going towards and gravitating towards. Every kid's got a smartphone yeah. uh, and you're just like, oh my gosh, uh, it's, it's really difficult to try to get them to put those down. But um, I saw the online teaching. I was like, all right, this is kind of where teaching is maybe shifting towards even in the classroom. I know that a lot of us teachers, we use things such as uh, Google Classroom, where it's like, okay, if you miss an assignment or something, go check Google Classroom. Um, and, you know, there's uh, there's other platforms and stuff. I remember we in college, we used something called Moodle. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even I don't even know if people even know what that is anymore, if that's kind of uh, <laughs> really outdated, which I'm sure it is now. But um, we're starting to see even in the classroom, you know, students, they just want the, they just want their computers. There's one thing that I know our high school has invested in, and this is kind of district wide and seems to be growing our Chromebooks. And what a Chromebook is, is it's just a basic computer. There's no hard drive to it. Of, I'm pretty positive. So you can't like save um, stuff onto the computer, but it gives you internet access and um, it allows you to basically, you know, browse the internet and uh use basic things like um you know microsoft things uh um, and you can free. store things on the internet right i mean I, when you were talking exactly. about this, like you know google's got a spreadsheet it's got a word document it's got uh, a powerpoint clone 
and you've got Google Drive. So you do all your work there and you save it there. Exactly. So in the past few years, I've been seeing that this shift has been happening even in our regular education classrooms. And same thing, you know, you look at college and universities, um, you know, the kids, some of them don't even go to class and they just show up and take the test. You know, they can just learn everything online. They can just go to YouTube and they can go to Udemy and learn things. So mm -hmm. um, there has definitely been a shift. And I definitely think it's going to continue to shift um, towards, you know, video recording, online teaching. I think that that's, uh, I don't think that's going anywhere soon. I think it's going to actually keep growing, which is positive for everyone who is teaching online. But I think that is a very unique perspective because you don't hear from a lot of teachers in the classroom uh, who are also teaching online as seriously as I am. And um, I actually am making the full-time shift to teaching online. Um, I have made that decision and um, have finished up teaching in the classroom for now um, just because I really, really enjoy this. And luckily for me, the income is coming in. Um, it's been a little bit slower the last few months, which has right. been a little worrisome, but um, enough to where I'm able to support myself and uh, really push this business full time. And um, there have been some things in the classroom and with the whole school system that I particularly maybe haven't agreed with 100%. Um, and so I kind of see this as an opportunity to create my own little academy um, mm -hmm. and create my own little school and bring in other instructors who um, want to work with me and, and, and build something amazing. So that's kind of the shift that I have made and uh, where I'm going uh, in the future. So definitely exciting times. But um, yeah, it's I guess I am kind of a unique case, to say the least. So tell us a little bit about your Udemy strategy. Sure. Um, so yeah, you, if you look at my you know profile right now, there's you know fifty something courses up there and one hundred and twenty four, twenty five thousand unique students um, that uh, will get a lot of people's attention. And I think what my strategy has been, we'd have to go back to um, getting started and sure. where there was a there was a, a moment that clicked for me. And I actually explained this in uh, my online teaching masterclass. And that course has actually been doing the best for me this month, um, where I explained my online teaching process um, in depth. It's over like 10 and a half hours long. Wow. And um, I really get into detail of what I've done and why I've done it. But I created a course, my first course on goal setting. I then created a uh, confidence and self-esteem course. And um, from there, I was just like, it's been th like two or three months and like, I'm scripting everything out. I'm using mm -hmm. PowerPoint. Like this is just taking forever, you know, like I'm getting some results, but if I ever want to make this something that's meaningful and reach even more students, there's got to be a better way. And um, I started just looking around and seeing the instructors on Udemy that were actually winning, that were getting really good results and started to kind of maybe, you know, pick up on some of their strategies. And um, Alan Hill was one of the instructors who obviously had a lot of people, but then Jerry Banfield, who has done extremely well yes. on Udemy, um, was giving free coupons away to all of his courses. This is about a year and a half ago now, um, like crazy. So I just started enrolling in them because I'm like, well, why not? <laughs> Three. And um, he seemed to be getting some really good results. And from there, um, I saw something very unique, which was he had other teachers in some of his courses. And I'm like, wait a minute, you can do that? Like, I didn't, you know, he didn't even know that that was possible. Right. And from there, I took his How to Teach Online course through Udemy. That's, and it's actually one of the, uh, best-selling courses that he has right now. And it's a course that I'm also a part of now since uh, yeah, I've taken the course. I wrote him a really nice review. Um, and I said, you know, this is, this is awesome. Like this really, really helped me because there were a few things technically that I was struggling with at the time. And from there, I said to him, hey, listen, you know, you seem to be able to create courses, you know, high, you know, some pretty high quality courses, you seem to be really dedicated to this, you know, you seem to be somebody that can maybe, um, you know, I could help and that, you know, you know, we could kind of play off of each other a little bit. Do you want to create a course together? And, you know, we can crank out something really quick. I'll work really hard. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And I just sent him a simple message and he was really receptive to it. And, um, from there, we created a course on, you know, teaching online, and it was very basic, very simple. And uh, there actually are some some good strategies in it still. But um, from there, 
I saw that since he had a bigger student base than I did, he promoted the course for us via the uh, promotional announcements. And like overnight, we had like $150, $200, which was like what I earned the whole previous month. So I was like, whoa. Yeah. Okay. That's There's awesome. Like, I was like, thank you. It's like, thank you for sending the promo email. Like, this is cool. Like, I remember just being so happy. I was like, $150. Like, I can go to dinner with that. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just, it just super exciting because, you know, you, like, literally overnight, it's like this money just drops into your account. And, um, you know, also got new students to promote to. I was like, holy cow, this is, there's something to this. And from there, um, he took the strategy a step further and started hiring freelancers and started working with other people off of Udemy who had technical skills, which seemed because if, if you noticed, and we talked about this before, uh, this little chat, Udemy came out with its own little spreadsheet of the 50 million or something students or however many and where they're enrolling and what they're doing. Yeah. And the highest enrollments are in the development area. And so, you know, in the hot topic area of development, Jerry's like, well, I don't know how to teach, uh, you know, these development courses, but I know a lot of other people do. And if I can bring them onto you to me and we can collaborate and create a course together, that's how we're really going to create something special. And so he started doing that. And I said, all right, well, if he can do it, why can't I? And, um, mm -hmm, right. you know, I just kind of started learning um, kind of some of the strategies that he was, you know, taking. And um, I took out some uh, some credit actually on PayPal because this is how um, I was able to compensate some of the instructors that I've been working with. And um, I was like, all right, I'm going to give this a shot, see how this goes. And from there, um, it's amazing because some of the courses have done really well. Some of them haven't done really well, but every single course that I've created and co-taught has again, spiraled upwards in the sense of I have another course, more students, and some of the, the technical courses that I have now on web development, um, Android development, these things, there's like 30 or 40,000 students in these courses. So I was like, whoa, okay. Um, I created a course on goal setting. And I was happy to get four or 5,000 students, but right. now I have, you know, six or seven times that amount in this course. That was a learning curve for me. And I think I was just the type of person that was open to something like this and was just like, you know, if, if I can serve as many people as I can and work with another instructor who's going to do a good job, you know, why not give it a try? And there mm -hmm. are some, there's some goods and bads about this strategy. Um, the goods are you can, you know, create an awesome course and you can minimize each other's weaknesses and maximize each other's strengths. Um, however, you know, knowing what I know now, it's like you have to brand yourself a certain way as well, because, you know, if I launch a course on my own, people are expecting certain things from me. And then I, you know, launch another course where I'm maybe not the lead instructor and then they're getting a whole different kind of perspective and you get some kind of feedback where people are like, where are you? <laughs> you know, I see yeah. you in a few of these big videos, but then, you know, the other, the other guys doing some of the, you know, more of the technical teaching. And, um, so if you structure it in a way, and that's why, you know, I've created my own website now where it's my own Academy and I'm making it in the sense of where it's like, you know, its own kind of mini Udemy almost where a lot of other instructors are coming in and wanting to work with me and I'm working with them and I create my own stuff as well. Um, if you brand it in that way, I think it can go really well. Um, but I think a lot of instructors are like, it's just me. I just want to yeah. have students like me. I want me. 100% of the commission. I don't yes. want to split it. That that too. Um, and so from, from that standpoint, it's been a little bit challenging, but um, the rewards are certainly there. And, you know, my email list is, is massive. A hundred thousand, you know, email people that I can now email is, is amazing. And a few months ago, it was really amazing because sending the $9 coupons, um, re you, I would get tons of bulk buyers and people yes. just going like crazy. And that's maybe something we could shift into talking to is how the new pricing change has affected things. Let's, but, ta let's uh, talk about that. How have the new pricing changes affected what you're doing? Sure. Um, and I've seen this across the board. So it's not just me, but prices have definitely, uh, sales, I should say, have definitely gone down. Um, I've trended down a little bit. And I think it has to do with a few different things. But I've really taken a hit on my own email promotions. Um, I used to be able to, like I said, really send out some emails, you know, for a new course or two, and people would just go crazy for it. Now it's like, you know, if I send out a course, you know, it's listed at $20. 
and it's going on you know, 50% even for $10, you know, you know, there's not a huge gap between $9 and $10, but the perceived value of, okay, the course is only $20. There's not mm. a whole lot of urgency here for me to enroll in this. Uh, you know, I'll check it out later. And, you know, where if a course was listed at 199 or 299, like it was in the previous few months, then it drops down to $10 and it's only on sale for four days. There's way more urgency there because it's like I'm saving $200. Like that's, that's awesome. And so there has been a shift there where, yes, I am seeing actually more organic sales um, mm -hmm. where people are just buying purely organically, not using a coupon. I am seeing that. However, compared to the amount of fast sales that I was getting, um, you know, at the discounted rate, it's not even close. Um, you know, I think maybe for every one organic sale, I probably would have had like 15 or 20, um, you know, right. where they were discounted with the old strategy. Um, so it's definitely slowly, I think this month has been a little bit better. Um, my promotions have been way down this month though. Last month they were okay. Cause I think I had a, a few trickle in, um, at the end of or the beginning of April, while the right. old pricing was still available, but yeah, the, the I think across the board too, a lot of instructors are really having a hard time with their email list and getting people to buy new courses from them because of this perceived value. And um, there's just not as many, there's not that urgency created anymore. Um, I don't know how that's going to affect things moving forward, but um, definitely interesting and definitely something there. But um, yeah, it's, I think if I can jump in here, sure. there's going to be, uh, I think, two things that occur. And for some reason, I'm getting an echo. So I'm just going to mute you for a second, see if that does it. Uh, we, we're having a totally different pricing structure, which means we're no longer, as you were saying, going from $2.99 to $10 or $9. <clears throat> and what's that's going to what that is going to do i was just thinking about this as you were talking about it it's going to mean that you have to be a far better copywriter mm -hmm. because you need to be able to what the excitement before was like you said you got 4 days you're going to save 299 290 dollars you're going to move you know that's great okay i'm going to get in i'm going to do the netflix thing and bulk buy now it's going to be i have to convince you why you have to buy the course and that yep. just it was just occurring to me cuz i had the same thing the beginning of the month i did a promo it was great and then i basically repeated it at the end well a week ago and it was like wow like nothing like zero that had never ever happened to me before yeah and either i hadn't had any new people come into the other courses or which i know wasn't true or uh, it just wasn't being effective so i think what we're going to need to do is become far more better salespeople and marketers than what we've been because it's been kind of a lazy thing right sure. and yeah. the market has changed we've got a different uh we're getting different people in we've a different approach and everything else and i think long term udemy would not have survived if they kept doing it the way they were doing it i really think that they would have had the fta or whatever those initials are come in and say you know what and I think they looked at some of the things that Amazon was doing and some of the problems maybe they, I think probably some, their law, their law, I have no clue, right? But I, I, I can imagine a meeting where their law, law team walked into the president's office and said, dude, what are you doing? Do you know that as soon as you're big enough and anybody notices what you're doing, that you're just going to get shut down? And so I think they had no choice. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the legal end of it of what exactly kind of was going on and you know everything else but um i'm very hopeful and i really do think that in the long run this will most likely be a better thing you know in a year or two from now yeah you know, if we get as many enroll you know students enrolling as we did with the uh, you know discounted coupons and all that kind of stuff our revenues are going to be much better because there's a higher price point and that's some of the yeah. things that they've been you know forcing and kind of saying it's to so us. nice to get a commission that is seven dollars or twelve dollars or fifteen dollars compared to a dollar eighty eight yeah yeah like like you get 30 people sign up and it's a dollar dollar 88 times 30 and then you get 10 people show you know and it's seven dollars and ten dollars like i look at that and I just go yeah 
right? Because yeah. I think the same way, like there's no way with the growth in video training and what Udemy is able to do in terms of marketing, which is very, very good, that we're not going to get to that point where we're getting the same types of, of, of students coming in, except now instead of getting two bucks for them, we're going to get seven bucks, we're going to get 10 bucks. And I'm going, great, because, you know, I've, I have certain daily goals that I want to hit. And it's a lot easier to hit $30 a day when you've got three $10 payments than right. when you've got $31 payments. Right, right. exactly. It's, I mean, it's like, wow. Yeah, it's um, it's so interesting because I can see both sides of the coin here. I think that as long as Udemy kind of, and, and I think they have implemented both sides here, they still do some discounting. Um, they still, I think, are going to have things like Black Friday. They're still going to yeah. have their massive sales and like, you know, discount our courses, which is good. They've limited it now, though, to where you can't like, you know, give it away for like two dollars or something like that, which sure. I think is good as well. Um but then also, too, they're trying to just have as many people just go right to the website and, and buy. And like you said, it, it really puts the pressure back on the instructors. And this is what they said, too, is you have to have, you know, the higher the quality courses now are going to rise to the top. because. Well, and I'll interrupt you here. Right. How good is your promo video? Right. How good is your course summary? Right? right. Like mine aren't good at all. I need to really go back and and and, and I, I'm a good copywriter, but I just. You, know, you can only do so much and I haven't spent a lot of time on the, on the sales letter part of it and, and on the video sales letter part of it. And I think that, uh, you know, most of the people who, if you're complaining about your sales, one of the things you have to look at is your funnel, which is what is the first impression that people get. There's right. a big video right there. Is it your introductory course, uh, you know, lecture that says, hi, this is Scott. I'm uh, really excited that you're joining us and I can't right. wait for you to get going. Or is it an actual, you know, here are the benefits of taking the course. Here's the problems that we solve and, and move forward. Uh, I want to switch for just a second because I brought up the who's learning on Udemy infographic that they did. Yes. And uh, so it's 11 million global learners. Millennials are 50%. That's shocked me. I, not that I'd actually thought about it, but I thought, wow, like this is how, like you were saying in, uh, you know, how people are learning. Uh, it, they're learning online and the millennials are leading that. Gen X is at 40% and I'm, my generation's at eight. <laughs> 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 so I'm thinking, you know, if I'm making courses for my generation, I'm missing out on like 92% of what's going on out there. Sure. Yeah, it's um, it is very interesting to to look and see that graph, and um, I think maybe that's a little bit about what I've been, you know, seeing in the classroom too is the shift of what were the the students, you know, the younger generation, um, where they're moving towards and what they want. You know, we're uh, we're definitely in a, a different age as well. And this came, I don't even know who I was talking to about this, but you know, about a hundred years ago it was more of the industrial age. And now yes. today, oh, and this is what I actually, I read uh, this in a book that I actually caught online. And um, he said that we're in an information age and information, if you have the right information, you know how to market it and do stuff with it, man, you're, you're, you're light years ahead. And so I really, you know, I look at what I'm doing. I'm like, all right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. Now it's yes. about moving it to a whole nother level and you know marketing it to a whole nother level. And I think that's the biggest part that I'm struggling with personally is, you know, I didn't go to school for marketing. I didn't go to school for, you know, I know what to do. Um, I think it's just the execution part, which mm -hmm. we'll get there. It's just going to take some yes. learning. But um, right. yeah, it's interesting to see um, who's learning, what, what they're learning. And uh, that is, a, I'm really glad that they actually came out with that. Yeah, me too. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious your opinion on this because you've done kind of the personal development courses and then you've also done some development courses. Now I have, unless you call how to podcast development, I haven't done any development courses at all. I've done some uh, health, alternative health courses. I've done some uh, therapy type courses. I've done some how to get a job type courses, sure. uh, you know, so a, a various number of business courses. Um, and I've looked at, you know, cause I could do how to make an app course easily. 
right? I've sure. done it. I've done it. I could do how to use WordPress course because I've done it. I'm actually thinking about how to how to podcast using WordPress because it, it's an easy thing for people to do. If they've already got a WordPress blog, you can put a plug in in and away you go, right? Yeah. Um, because I because I my focus is doing. Well, I can't even really say that. But really, it's podcasting, stock options, personal development, alternative health, and then I have this buddy who's a coach in Moncton, British Columbia, no, uh, New Brunswick, sorry, uh, Canada, and he keeps sending his coaching clients to me to do courses. So then it becomes who knows what, and and away you go. But um, I, I've. I haven't done the development end of it. And part of the reason why is I've looked at it and I thought, you know, is this saturated and, and is it too competitive? Right? Like it's, sure. so part of what I've looked at is I thought, you know what, it's obvious that Udemy has made its fortune on development, right? When you look at iOS nine program courses and all that sort of stuff, it's like you were saying like hundreds of thousands of students. Then yep. you look at, uh, you know, uh, the motivational courses or yoga or whatever, and it's 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 sort of thing, like obviously a lot smaller. Right. So then I'm going, well, if this whole thing is going to like explode, do I want to be part of this huge chunk? And then is, you know, how much more is it going to explode when you've got like, how many programmers are there in the world? Like, sure. okay, that maybe there's a million and we've got half a million in there, it's gonna double. But how many people are gonna be interested in better relationships or losing weight? You know, well, you know, we know there's millions and billions of those, but there's not a lot of it on Udemy. And so that's kind of been my philosophy. I've been planting these seeds. And it for the long term, my expectation is, is that in a year or two or three, this is gonna have grown to somewhat a lar lot larger than it is now. Mm -hmm. Because part of my philosophy is like, okay, Udemy knows how to get developers in to take the courses. Now, internet and marketing 101 is you start at zero, you go through a growth phase, you go through a momentum phase, you hit stability, and then you decline. Mm -hmm. So what that happens for everything. It, there's no place where it doesn't happen because right. it's we're a baby, we're a child, we're a young adult, we're an adult, we're an old adult, we die. It's just yep. life, right? So... I'm thinking right now, this is where a lot of those personal development, alternative health sections of Udemy is when the developers get saturated, Udemy needs growth. So where are they going to, they, they're very good at the marketing. They're excellent at the marketing. They've been focusing right. on development. Now they're going to be focusing on business more. They're going to be focusing on health issues more. They're going to be focusing on all these other areas more because they'll look at it and say, you know what, if we got 59, 50% of people are millennials, only 8% are baby boomers. How do we get more baby boomers on? Sure. Right? Yeah. So anyway, those are, that's kind of like what I've been sort of thinking about. And yet uh, I'm, I'm quite likely wrong. <laughs> yeah, I should be doing sure. the development courses, right? Yeah, I can tell you a little bit about my experience. I'm not the quote unquote developer when it comes to my courses in the sense that I'm teaching the technical things. Um, I have professional developers who will show the tutorials and do a great job teaching. However, what I have noticed um, from just a business standpoint is a lot of students seem to be very interested in the development stuff. So, okay, great. What does that mean for, for me if I want to go in to do something like this? What it means and what it's done for me personally is um, my emails, my promotional emails. If I created a new development course on, you know, something maybe niche, something like uh, maybe just WordPress or just Ajax or just, uh, you know, something like that. And I funnel a bunch of students from, you know, a course on bootstrap and php but you want to learn even more you know specifically sure. php boom you can easily funnel them and they're very interested in this if they like your other course they'll be very interested and that just there's just more of them there's just there, there's just more so from that standpoint um yes it is very competitive it's very competitive i think some of my development courses have done well but they're nowhere near the top of the list of some of these other ones and i think that's the challenge because um, if you can get a course up there, then you're doing very, very well. Um, so it is competitive. I'm not going to lie to you. If you if you were to put right. a course in development and web development, I mean, you're going to have to have something so outstanding that it stands on, you know, way out on its own that um, it's going to be able to compete with that. But at the same time, 
if you create a, a development course, let's say you take your, you know, boot, um, your course for WordPress and, you know, podcasting, right. And, you know, that's going to be maybe a little bit more niche, but maybe, maybe, you know, enough about WordPress to create a WordPress course. There are a ton of people that want to learn WordPress. WordPress is huge right now. And so, you know, you give it away for free, maybe to start a little bit, you're going to get some more people enrolling and that's going to take your student base that it shows on your instructor profile and it's going to take it to another level and from there you can market that and that's what i always market i do my promotional videos i do them very similar because they seem to be working pretty well um it's me in front of a green screen um, i try to use the images as much as i can and i always say who i am who i'm working with and then also too that i'm now serving over a hundred thousand unique students um, if you were to just focus on and this is what i've learned you know, because I'm more of a personal development person myself. I'm actually creating a masterclass self-esteem course, which will be coming out in another couple of days here. Um, I've worked really hard on this and um, I've gone outside. I was in Arizona. I was in uh, <laughs> Las Vegas, Nevada. So um, all over the place. And then I also have been using my green screen very effectively because that seems to be very um key and it's just a higher quality piece of equipment. Um, it's just more engaging as well. But I saw that like, okay, there's just not that many people right now enrolling in the self-development stuff. And, you know, yes, you can you can still make good money on self-development things. However, there's more people enrolling in the development, which the statistics have shown. Sure. And so if I want to market myself as somebody who has a ton of students, which is, again, social proofing yourself a little bit, makes you more marketable, I I would suggest that even if you have a development course that doesn't do very well, I have a development course that really doesn't make me any money. It's like, I think it makes me maybe $20, $30 a month. It's one of the first ones that I did. So learning experience. Um, it's got like 30,000 people in it. It's like wow. basic HTML and CSS. And uh, so that number then has translated into the amount of students that I've had. And it's made me a huge email list. I can remarket to them. I, you know, how many sales am I going to get? I, you know, it's definitely been slower, but you know, from the standpoint of just sheer volume, I definitely think there is value. You make a great, a you make there. a great point there, Joe, because uh, I'm at about 22,000 mm -hmm. and it wasn't that long ago. I was at about 12. Sure. And then one of the people in my, students that's on Facebook all the time commented, but wow, like you just hit 12,000 students, right? So then, you know, it didn't take long to get to 15. So I, I posted that, you know, well, now I'm at 15 and then I'm at 20, you know, like you hit the, the, the milestones, right? Right. And, and what happens when you have something like this, and I think this is a really important point, is people start taking notice. Wow, like you have 22,000 students. Wow, you have 110,000 students. Wow. And so you must be doing something. And that becomes really attractive. Like, what are you doing? I want to know. And people right. want a piece of you. So I'm invited to conferences that I wasn't going to be invited to previously. And, you know, like a lot of doors open, a lot of things happen when you've got that. If you had 500 students, our conversation today would be totally different than <laughs> what Absolutely. it is right now right you know i got my fingers crossed scott i'm really hoping yeah right exactly <laughs> it, it, it is true i mean you know just by even anybody listening to this and maybe even re-watching it just to pick up on one or two things that we've been discussing i mean that could be a game changer for them so yeah. um having that experience and having the the proof now and the results that i have um it's pretty crazy i look back at my old videos and it's like goals for myself i remember my first year doing this which was last uh january is when i first set out i set out to do i wanted 20 20 20 000 students and uh i didn't the, the number of courses didn't matter but i set a goal i was like i want uh, 20 000 unique students and i hit that goal like took me to September. Um, and I was so excited. I remember uh, like I had like, I even had like overnight, I had like 5,000 students enroll. It was insane. Wow. And I had like, I had 22,000 and I made a video on it and I'm like 22,000. Like you have like a hundred thousand more people now. Like, and that was like six months ago. So, um, <laughs> You so know, you can see very, very high growth quickly on Udemy. Very, very high growth, very quickly. And some of my, you know, if you were to type in some of my um, development courses, the Bootstrap one, the PHP course, um, my Android development course, they have 20,000 plus students in them. And um, a lot of them are free students, but I've been very sure. open to 
giving my course away for free. And here's another, here's a, you know, a little, uh, maybe a strategy that's really worked well for me. It's very simple, very easy. It is giving your course away for free relentlessly because there are a lot of students who want to learn things on Udemy who can't even pay for it right now. I actually work with an instructor who he doesn't have PayPal. They don't have PayPal in his country. So, um, you know, we have to go about doing things a little bit differently mm. for, for compensating him. But for him to try to, he can't even buy a course on Udemy because um, the payment method isn't there. And I think in some of these other countries, there are a lot of students that they just can't pay for it. Like there's literally no way for them to do it, but they can't yeah, take hungry it. students, great students to have. Exactly. But they can enroll for free, which they they will. They'll give you some the minutes watched, which will help boost your organic ranking. And then they'll also, hopefully, if you do have a really good course, give you a positive review, which will also mm -hmm. help things as well. And so there is a ton of value, I think, in still having free students um, come in because it, it just it's a win for everyone. It's a win for the student. It's a win for the teacher. Um, you know, it's just, yeah, I, I personally believe in that. And that's something that, you know, I look at myself maybe as someone different teaching here on Udemy is, you know, the money is great. It's very rewarding. But when I get a review where like it's changed somebody's life and I've gotten a lots of like, you know, not to yes. toot my own horn, but I've gotten plenty of those. I mean, that right there is like you can't put a dollar amount on that. And no, you can't. Um, it's, it's just very I'm glad you brought this up. I'm sure. glad you brought this up because there are I've been noticed about three months ago. There was a lot of people in the Facebook Udemy group saying, you know, don't put this sec. Don't put uh, free coupons out anymore. They're not, you know, it's not, doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. And I know Jerry is another person that's relentless on doing that. Mm -hmm. And and I thought about it and I thought, you know, the people that are saying that are the people that are established. And so there's a distinction between I've been on Udemy for a year. I have 200,000 students and I'm just starting out and I need to get students. Right. And I think that was one of the things that they were just not paying attention to when they were talking about, you know, you shouldn't do free coupons anymore. I don't do free coupons anymore. But yeah. Well, if I had a million students, I might not do free coupons anymore either because I'm at a different stage than when I started out. And I really think that you, you hit on a really good point is that there's a lot of free students that never do anything, but then there's a percentage of them that, as you say, you change their lives. It uh, it makes a huge difference in their life. And I'd never really occurred to me that there are people that are unable to, because we're talking about electrons that are basically free, right? right? I mean, you spend your two or three hours, you make your course, you know, somebody pays you for it. Somebody doesn't pay you for it. Like really, uh, you know, so it's, it's kind of interesting hearing you go on that because I kind of uh, feel the same way. Sure. I'm always putting yeah. Coupons. One last thing about it too, um, which is really interesting, kind of just a unique perspective, um, is I almost always try to give my course away for free, at least in the beginning, because you know I could probably get a hundred, maybe two hundred paid students into a course, but then when it launches on the, on the Udemy marketplace, that first thirty day, that window is critical. It's like you know, it's almost like a, a launching a book. You know, like your book's either going to make it and like really do well on the, or it's going to be put on the back shelf and there it goes. And so if you're able to say to people, hey, listen, we got like 4,000 people enrolled in this course in the week. Um, you know, they're a lot more free, but there's at least 4,000 people in there. There's, they're generating minutes watched. Um, yeah. hopefully some, some of them won't, that's fine, you know, but at least Udemy then is picking up. Okay. People are enrolling in this course, right? Like they're clicking and it's converting. So that's a good thing. Um, and also hopefully you'll be getting those, you know, good reviews and, um, you know, it, it is something to be said for that there, you know, eventually do you want to give it for, for free forever? Probably not. There is a point where, yeah, maybe you do need to stop it. But even me, you know, I got a hundred, um, you know, thousand students. I'm still giving it away for free because of there's, you know, there are some of those um, benefits to it. And because too, it's all about the philosophy of the teacher and like what they're trying to get out of it. And, you know, just that is kind of just my philosophy. It's working for me. It might, you know, not work for you. It may be different for somebody else, but I do suggest giving it a, a good, clean look and there are, I think, I think there are more benefits to giving it away for free than um, than not, and it just feels good. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Well, and I think that's your attitude and your your personality, which I sure. which I totally respect and agree with and feel the same way. Uh, you reminded me of a friend of mine who's one of my co-instructors, and she was always freaking out because I was giving away free coupons. And I just told her, like, just relax, you know, just. Yeah. And she says, yeah, she's a, she's an EFT person. You know, she says, I'm tapping on being more <laughs> generous like you are, Scott. I'm working on it. <laughs> but uh you have to make like I think the biggest takeaway from what you just said was you have to make the courses look like something the student will buy when Udemy brings a student. Exactly. Like I don't see my job as selling my courses. I see Udemy's job as selling my courses. Udemy cannot sell my course if I have one three star review and four students. Exactly. They if I have ten or fifteen or a hundred five star reviews and I've got. A thousand or two thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand students in the course, Udemy can sell it easily all day long because I have all the social proof and and all the rest of it that goes along with it. Right. And so I that's why I think the the free coupons is so important, and I think that's why they when they made all these changes, it was well you can still give it away for free. And it's interesting when you hear other instructors say, well, free coupons don't work anymore. Like, I don't know why they don't you would work say in, that. Yeah, they don't work in the same way that they used to. They used to, there was, was a lot more emphasis on a free coupon, meaning your ranking organically on Udemy's website, if you had like a lot of just students enrolling for free, your course mm. would be shot up right to the front page. I remember that was like for my first personal development and goal setting course, bam, I hit the first page like right away because I had just a ton of students in there. And so at the time, um, there wasn't that, you know, many courses that were doing that. And so it was like, okay, that worked. Boom. It just popped right onto the front page. I started getting some more traffic that way because I was on that front page. And, um, but now if, you know, you give away your student, you know, course for free and you got 3000 students in there, it doesn't, there's some sort of, uh, you know, algorithm or something that's being placed on value of the free student. It's not mm. there as much anymore. So I think that's what people are saying. Oh, it doesn't work in the sense of, okay, yeah, like it's not going to pop up to the number one ranking because you gave your coupons away for free, but there is still an incredible amount of value in the free, like the, the free coupons, as we've mentioned, um, for social proof and a bunch of other reasons. Cool. Joe, tell us a little bit about some of your courses because uh, I appreciate you being on here. I know we've been pretty much an hour, which sure. is actually twice as long as I was <laughs> expecting and told you, but it's been a great time. I really enjoyed having you. I want you to tell us a little bit about some of your courses. And um, I know that you're going to give me some coupons to your courses and I'm going to have them either in the YouTube description or the, depending on where you see this so that you can go and you can get a nice uh, discount off of his courses. And I highly recommend them. I love your courses. Not so keen on the development ones because I'm not into any sort of development stuff, sure. but all the motivational and personal development and self-esteem courses are excellent. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And um, we'll definitely give um, special coupons away here and uh, tell everybody how to find a lot of my courses. First off, you can just go to Udemy and just search my name, Joe Paris. Um, and my instructor profile will pop up there. But if you want to do it one better, all you have to do is go to my website, which is just www.joeparis.com. Uh, made it very, very easy for everyone. And I've designed my website now to where you can search for all of my courses. There's an awesome search bar right at the top there. They're all listed and they all have coupons built into them already. So it's very simple. Um, you can just go right to my website and click on the course that you want. It'll direct you right to you to me and have you enrolling in the course in a matter of seconds. So I've made it very simple from that standpoint. But I'll talk about a, a few of my courses and um, a few other things. But the one um, course that I'm creating currently is a masterclass on confidence and self-esteem because this is something that's really transformed my entire life is feeling more confident, feeling more worthy of the things that I really desire most in life and where I want to go and like what I'm choosing to uh, you know, where I'm taking my life. And it, the course is going to be very big, very comprehensive. I take it from beginner to advanced, and it's going to be a complete masterclass. I'm really, really excited about this one because I've done a transform your confidence course that has done really, really well on Udemy. So I've just made it even better, um, more strategies, everything else. So that one I'm really excited about. It should be nice. out in a few days. And um, so this is perfect timing. 
Perfect timing. Yep. Perfect timing. So um, it's going to be uh, hopefully be towards one of the first or second pages on the personal development self-esteem area and um, definitely looking forward to that course. Um, personally, the courses where you see me the most are the ones where there are uh, they're in the personal development area. I also do teacher training. So if you want to learn how to teach online, I have a master class showing you a lot of the things that we've discussed in this podcast, but also some more um, technical things like how to set up your course, um, how to go about you know uploading things and um, how to do the editing. I use iMovie and I use some more technical things to make my videos look polished, look nice. How to use the, the microphone and the camera that we talked about earlier. Um, I show you exactly how to do this so it's not confusing because that was a huge learning curve and it just, I wish somebody you know would have shown me that. It's one big course. Um, you know, I, I dive into how to get started on Udemy. It, it's it, that one's great. Um, is one of the best sellers right now for me and is doing really well. Um, and then my development courses. If you want to learn how to build an Android application, I have a course that's over 17 hours long. Has done extremely well. Um, you know, the the um, co instructor that I work with is an expert. Um, he is just very very good at what he does. I have a couple other development courses on PHP, which is over you know 19 and a half hours long. That one has done very very well. A Bootstrap course, which is about eight hours long, um, and I'm actually creating a master master class on. Um, development. It's going to be somewhere around 50 hours long with a co-instructor. Wow. And uh, we're going to see how this one does. Um, if we really uh, have been working on this project for a few months and it's going to be our master class. And if you've enrolled in any of my other development courses, um, this is going to be the one that you want because we go through about 10 to 15 different frameworks from um, the complete basics. I mean, we show you if you're a complete beginner, like what coding is how to code, how to get, you know, a notepad, how to, uh, you know, what is HTML, what is CSS, you know, and every section has a mini project. So we go through and not only do we teach you the basics, but then we show you hands on a miniature project. And it's, uh, it's very exciting. So that's a new one coming out. Um, that should be out, you know, maybe a couple of weeks at the latest. Um, we're really trying to push for that one. And, uh, definitely excited but you know i got so many other courses as well i could just keep going here but um you know i really appreciate you having me on scott and i think we can you know probably wrap up here and uh, yeah. uh i'm sure that but um another thing really quickly the coupon codes that will work for me if you just go to udemy.com um it'll, it's just my initials and then an a and then um it's either 10 or 15. so each of my courses right now are, po are posted between uh $20 and $30. And so if you just type in to the coupon code section there on Udemy, JPA10 or JPA15, that should get you the maximum discount on any of my courses. And I use those exact coupon codes on my website as well. So that's probably the best way to go is to just go directly to my website because it shoots you right back to Udemy anyways. But I just wanted to uh, throw that out there. Um, so Joe Paris Academy, so JPA10, so like the number 10, and then JPA15 for 15, and that'll get you half off those as well. So um, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure that will help a lot of people. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in class. <laughs> Thanks. I really appreciate you taking the time, Joe. Really appreciate uh, your courses. It's <clears throat> they've I've gotten a lot out of them. Which and it's interesting because it was in your you made an announcement, an educational announcement in your Udemy course, and I replied to it, and then you replied to my reply, and here we are, right? Yes. So it's yes. it's great. I'm and that's what you, maybe one thing too, just to kind of lead off on or to to end on. I'm very. Um, engaging with my students like if a student has a question or something you know comes up like and it, it gets shot on the uh you know you post it in udemy like i do my absolute best to get to those at a very timely manner so that is one thing that maybe some of the other instructors don't um do as much like if you enroll in one of my courses like my my confidence course or my uh master class on how to teach online and you have a question i mean it's going to take me no longer than a day or two and sure. uh I'll get to you as soon as I can. And yeah, you respond very fast. Yes. 
Awesome. Well, thank you, Joe. Really, really appreciate having you on here. Thank you, everybody, for listening. This has been the Internet Marketing Unleashed uh, podcast and Blab. And we'll see you next time, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks.